Hey guys! So it's almost July, uh, which means that my baby is almost a year old. Um, man, I keep thinking about last year, like as the weather's getting hotter and thinking about maternity leave, how a year ago I was like super pregnant and doing a lot of walking, partly to try to get the baby to turn head down and partly because it was getting really hot in the house and I just needed to be out where the air was moving a little bit. Anyway, I um, didn't really give a birth story at the time. Um, I posted a couple quick update videos that were sort of unedited. I was trying to just enjoy time with the family, and so if you recall, I had um, pre-recorded a whole bunch of videos that were going out um, every Thursday and Tuesday um, during that like couple months of the you know new baby period of time um, and the Sunday videos were really rudimentary because I was I didn't want to have to worry about making them uh, so like I said I never made a birth story video but I figured that as we're coming up on the year anniversary I, I'll tell you the story now and basically this is everything that I can remember about the birth experience so taken into the consideration that you tend to forget a lot of stuff uh, you tend to forget like the hard parts and the painful parts, I think. Um, it's a lot harder when you're in the trenches. Um, and we're at the point now where everything is starting to look a little bit rosy and I'm like, yeah, I could do that again. Um, but anyway, like I said, uh, the baby was breech and so I was trying to get her to be head down so that I could have a vaginal delivery. I was going to the chiropractor like two or three times a week. I was walking every single day, I was doing these like inversions and tilts, if you go to spinningbabies.com I think, um, it's like a whole set of things to try to get the baby in, in alignment and engaged, um, and she just didn't want to. I had an ECV, the, I did a whole video about that up there, um, about the external cephalic version um, that I went through and my goodness. Like, I don't regret doing it, and I think if I had to do it again, I would opt to give it a shot, because I think it's worth it if it works. Um, but they say it's about 50-50, and I was the 50% that it didn't work. They pushed two, three times. One of the doctors had, like, really long nails and scratched me. Um, it hurt so much. Now, as we'll get to, I never have had a contraction, so I can't tell you how that compares. All I know is that I was gasping in pain, squeezing my husband's hand as hard as I could, um, and it didn't end up working. So anyway, because of that, um, we had to schedule a C-section. They would have done it any time after 39 weeks, but I decided I wanted to have her on her due date, um, partly because I figured, let's do it, you know, at least when she's full term. Um, you know, 40 weeks. Uh, one sort of silly reason is that I like July's birthstone a lot better than June's. Like, July has a ruby, and June has a pearl. A pearl's not even a stone, except in the way that a gallstone is a stone. Anyway, we scheduled the C-section for Monday the 2nd, um, which was my due date. And so we go in that morning, or okay, the night before, they give you these wipes to like, they're like prep wipes for surgery. I think it's for any surgery they give these to you and they're like these like thick wet wipes and you're supposed to use them on like every surface of your body basically. The thing about them is like they leave this sort of sticky residue that I did not really enjoy but anyway you do that the night before and then the morning of. Um, we went to mass the morning of because the timing worked out. Um, my parents had come into town the night before so we had dinner, um, we went to Carl Strauss, and I had a root beer, because I was still pregnant. Um, and then, yeah, the morning of we went to Mass, and they were there. I think my mother-in-law was also there. One, one of my in-laws was there also. Um, but I really didn't want them to come to the hospital during the surgery. I think they may have, um, but I told them that I didn't want to know about it. I said, I can't stop you, but... I don't want to know about it because the way I told them like 
I don't want to have to be worrying about you and I just want to be worrying about me and the baby and my husband. Like, that's what's important. You guys can come whenever. Um, basically, I just, I didn't want to have to worry about them and I didn't want to be, I didn't want to feel rushed. I wanted to be able to enjoy that golden hour and, um, you know, that, that bonding skin to skin time and all of that um, without worrying about anyone, like, feeling impatient. Um, <laughs> One thing is the hospital had terrible reception, and so it was, they were getting impatient just because Gina wasn't able to reply to their texts. But again, I, I think I'm going to be very recursive here. So we check into the hospital at, I think, 9 o'clock, and the surgery was scheduled for 11 o'clock. So you go to the labor and delivery check-in. Um, at our hospital, you don't have to go through the ER or anything when you're in labor, which is nice. You just go straight up to labor and delivery. Um, checked in at the window. I felt really silly. There is, like, a chair that's designated for the mother that's there. Um, I think it had a puppy pad on it, I guess in case your water breaks. Um, and it just felt super weird being there in no kind of labor whatsoever. Um, there were some other people in the waiting area that were, like, waiting for a family member, I think. And, you know, they're probably like, what's going on with this woman? She doesn't look like she's having contractions. Um, anyway, they checked us in, gave us the, you know, wristbands and stuff, and took us into a, um, like an observation room, a triage room. Um, this is the same, I believe the exact same room where I had had the ECV. Um, so they hooked me up to, you know, the heart monitors and stuff, you know, for the baby. Um, so, you know, you can hear her going, and they prepped me, I don't remember if they put in the IV first, but I told them, or I wanted to double and triple check that they confirmed with the ultrasound that she was still head up before doing any of the prep and stuff. Um, so I think it was probably before they stuck me um, that I they came in with the ultrasound and they checked and she was still head up. They were able to see that, you know, really quickly and easily that we still needed the C-section. To get out of the way, yes, I know it's possible to have a breech baby vaginally, but um, in the U.S. hospital system, it's just, they're not trained for that as much. It's just safer to have the C-section. Um, you know, you're just going to have fewer complications that way, and so... I was definitely okay with that. Um, fortunately, I had a few weeks to get ready for it, like, mentally. It took me a little while to be okay with it, but, you know, I think by the time I got there, I was ready and I was okay. Um, I don't remember what order all of this happened in triage, but I know that I got an IV. Um, I know they drew a vial of blood for testing and stuff. I think they're, I mean, they're typing it, right? And they're probably doing some other stuff just to make sure all of my, I don't know, I don't know. But um, I remember the one nurse, she was getting me my consent forms because, you know, I was signing for, for my consent forms and she was like, any consents for a tubal today? And I'm like, uh, no thank you. <laughs> I just thought it was so weird, the tone of voice where she was like, hey, would you rather have no children ever again? And I was like, yeah, no thank you. This is our first. Um, <laughs> Like, you know, I'm not going to get into theology or morals or ethics or whatever and why I, I would never, but um, <laughs> it just seemed really weird. Uh, they, yeah, were just monitoring the baby, monitoring me. They had this, you know, uh, blood pressure cuff on me. And I was in there for, well, like I said, 9 to 11. It was at least an hour and a half of just laying there and waiting. Um, I remember... One of the very last things, like they gave my hus my husband like a scrubs, like paper scrubs to put on and a cap. And they gave me a cap too. And right before that, I wanted to like redo my hair, but I had the cuff and the, um, the IV in this arm. I don't remember what was happening on this side. Um, and so I couldn't like pull it up myself. And so I had to have my husband pull it up and do a ponytail for me. Um, and he did a really terrible job because, <laughs> you know, he didn't have a daughter yet. <laughs> and so that was the way my hair was for, like, the rest of that day because I wasn't able to fix it again. Um, anyway, 
I'm hooked up to like bags of IV drips and things. They put a couple of drugs in me that I don't remember what they do. They weren't anything um, anesthetic yet and I don't know if I was on an antibiotic yet or if that came later but there was definitely um, I think I got two bags of saline before going in um, and I think it was is it the second one that was I, I don't know if it was set differently or if it was just flowing faster than usual but it was like right before we went in um, we stood up walked like the nurse had the pole with the IV and I was walking um, down the hall into the OR like through recovery and into the OR itself and it is the most surreal experience like you see on TV you see you know ORs all the time on medical shows and whatever but it's always people being rolled in on a gurney and I was just walking in of my own power you know and the nurse was holding the hospital gown shut with one hand and, and pushing my IV thing in the other so I was like what do I do with my hands I'm just walking along um, so we get in there we walk around the table for some reason get up and sit down and then they have me like lean over with the pillow to put in my um, my spinal because it was a spinal block and the second IV bag was like, like I said, going really fast for some reason. I don't know if it was maybe my heart rate has something to do with it. I, I'm not a doctor. Um, but anyway, I was sitting there holding this pillow and I start shaking and I felt like, oh my gosh, I didn't think I was this nervous that I would be physically, visibly shaking like this. And so I asked, like, is this, is this just nerves or did you put something in the IV? And they're like, eh, it's just saline. And I was like, oh my gosh, now I feel like a, like a wimp, you know? It's like, I, I thought I was a strong woman capable of handling this. And apparently I'm coming to pieces. I haven't even done the spinal yet. Um, and I remember the, um, the, I don't know what the title is, but there's like a nurse who's like the master of ceremonies in the OR. She spent most of the time over at this cor this computer in the corner logging everything and making sure everybody was doing everything. Um, so she seemed to be like in charge. But she came over and she put her arms around me and just gave me this tight hug as I was holding this pillow and the anesthesiologist was behind me putting in the spinal. And just the way she hugged me and made me feel like better and just like someone was there because my husband was still in this like waiting area out in recovery they weren't gonna let him in um, yet for I don't know reasons um, I, he wasn't able to come in I think until the rest of the team was there um, anyway but I think it was this nurse who told me that it was because the sailing bag was faster than usual which was making me shake like that it wasn't just me like it wasn't my fault that I was shaking she was the one who told me that and I was so grateful to her for those two things specifically she was the best and oh, I can't remember her name but we we complimented her before we left um anyway I get the spinal in they you know lay me on my back and very quickly I start to feel like tingling in my legs as things start to go numb and within five minutes I want to say I was completely numb um, they put up the the screen right away, um, and I'm laying there with my arms to either side. Um, it felt really weird and vulnerable, not to mention the fact that behind the screen, like, everything was just on display. Um, but the, um, uh, one of the nurses or the doctor or whatever was like, do you feel this? And I was like, I don't feel a thing. She's like, you might feel some pressure. And I don't, didn't feel a thing. She's like, oh, good, because I had you with this, like, she showed me these giant, like, clamp tweezer things that she was poking me with. I'm like, all right, I feel good about this. I can't feel a single thing, so that's fine. Um, in the pictures, it doesn't look like the screen is going to be that close to you. It feels like it's going to be here, you know? And then you have, you know, space, but it, it was really, like, super, I mean, I guess it was below my boobs, but it felt like it was right in my face, um, which was weird. It made me, it wasn't, like, claustrophobic, because the room was quite big. One thing I appreciated about the room is that I could clearly see an analog clock on the wall. So I know that we went in around on time. I think we started, give or take, five minutes from 11. 
and I was able to see, you know, time elapsing, which just felt, made things feel a little bit less surreal, because um, I was kind of grounded by that passage of time. Um, so every single time the door opened during prep, I was look, looking up over my shoulder, see, is that my husband? Is that my husband? <laughs> It was finally, finally he was able to come in and everything just felt better because I wasn't alone, um, you know, in a room. If everybody knows what they're doing, they're all very clinical and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. So he came there and he didn't know what he was doing either, so it was good. Um, and they started doing stuff. They were, you know, talking and doing whatever. Um, the, the doctor, the OB, asked if I had any preference for music. I said I didn't and he put on whatever his playlist was. And I literally didn't even hear it. I have no idea who was playing. I kind of want to ask my husband if he noticed, because I'm kind of curious what song was playing when my daughter was born, but I was, like, not even registering the music. I was just trying to focus on the sensations and stuff. So as they were getting started, I started to feel like I was having trouble breathing. And I was, like, starting to freak out a little bit. And I almost said something until I remembered hearing in somebody else's c-section experience video on YouTube, honestly no idea whose, but that they had heard, the anesthesiologist had told them that one of the drugs makes it like, or maybe maybe it's actually the, um, the anesthesia, that it numbs your diaphragm or something like that, that basically you can't feel yourself breathing, and so it feels like you're not getting enough air, and then you start to hyperventilate. And I did start to, I think, feel like I was about to start hyperventilating with like I get tingly but um as soon as I remembered that I was like okay just focus on regulating your breath and then I felt fine I was able to you know power through and it was fine because I mean part of me was like oh yeah you know if I can't have a natural birth I'll you know go without as much as I can because I didn't want to be loopy you know I wanted to experience everything I could so I'm glad like I wouldn't have rejected anything that they needed to give me, but I'm kind of glad that I, I felt like I was perfectly present the entire time. Um, I just couldn't feel anything physically. They say you can feel tugging. I did not. I was laying there, and I remember thinking to myself, just don't think about the incision, don't think about the incision. I kept telling myself, they haven't started yet. They haven't started yet. They haven't done anything yet until they go, here she comes, Gino, look! And he stands up and they, you know, the baby's coming out. And I, he didn't get a picture of the baby coming out, unfortunately. He was too in awe and he was making like wow de noises. Um, and then everyone started exclaiming um, that uh, apparently she like pooped on the way out. I assume that they caught it all because I didn't get sepsis, so um, <laughs> that was fun. I guess she, she pooped right on the way out, and so they were all like, oh, and then um, she wasn't making noise at first, which, I you know, I know that that's, like, fine and normal, but the fact that I couldn't see a thing, I could not see her. I just, I was told that she was out, but I couldn't hear her, and... I had to ask like four or five times before anyone was like, she's fine, she's fine. She finally did start crying eventually. Um, but they took her straight over to the warmer in the, on the other side where there was, you know, a needle, needle, neonatal nurse or something, whatever the term is, pediatric nurse. And they had to take her measurements and to dry her off and everything. So um, they told me in my pre-op visit that they did delayed cord cutting, which is like 30 seconds according to their standards, which is fine. I, like, I had heard a minute, but I guess that's fine. She's not anemic, so I guess it's fine. Um, so I guess they, I guess they waited 30 seconds. I don't know if they started closing anything or, you know, prepping that or whatever. I guess delivering the placenta is what they would have been doing. I don't know. I don't know, but, um, they they clipped it, like they didn't bring the afterbirth with her over to the table. They clipped it themselves, but they left a length because they let my husband actually like trim it. Um, which was sweet of them, I thought. So he was able to like, he, he wanted to stay by my side. I was like, no, go, go be with her. Cause like, I'm fine, go be with the baby who doesn't know what's happening. 
Um, and so he went over and he was able to like hold her hand and, um, you know, as they were getting her all, you know, cleaned up and her diaper on and stuff. And then they brought her over to me. So like I said, this sheet, this, you know, the curtain, I guess it's called a curtain, is like, it felt really close. Um, and so they layer for skin to skin, but like my chest is not available. So they basically have her like, it felt like she was basically across my neck. And she was nursing on the left side. I had the cuff, the blood pressure cuff on this arm. Um, and I was trying to like hold the baby, but it was cutting in. And for the next hour as in recovery also, it was cutting into my arm, which is super uncomfortable. And I would have to like straighten it out every time it wanted to take my blood pressure every couple minutes. Um, and okay, so I know that that latch, that very first latch was not great, but the pediatric nurse, seemed to think it was fine and so here I am not knowing any better going I guess that's kind of fine if she says it's fine um, it's sort of I, I think that was the beginning of a lot of my nursing pain um, and it took a few weeks before everything was completely pain free though not all of that was because of a bad latch I don't tell you this but sometimes nursing can hurt I think even if you're doing it right um, and I know early on I was a little big for her tiny mouth, but so we were nursing there for several minutes and able to, you know, as a little family there enjoy our our bonding time. Um, one of the first things I noticed is she had the detached earlobes that my husband was rooting for. Um, but after several minutes, um, they said that her she was starting to get cold. I don't remember how they took her temperature, but that she needed to be in, under a heat lamp for a little while. So um, she went out into the recovery area with my husband, and she was in, you know, a little portable, it wasn't an incubator, but it was just like a heat lamp. She's like a little rotisserie chicken. Um, and so, like, the plan originally had been for my husband to do skin to skin with her in recovery while they stitched me up, but he wasn't able to because she was in that, the lamp um, for that period of time. And she got out, like, of that she was fine to come out of that um, like as they brought me back so they stitched me up they do this fun inflatable raft thing to get you from the table to the gurney and then from the gurney to the bed so that was fun um, oh, there's at one point where I started to slip off the table as they were getting that ready and it was the weirdest sensation because I could feel myself slipping but had literally no control over those muscles to do anything about it um, and I was sort of only vaguely aware that they were my legs, only because I could feel sort of the the rotation in my hips as they were going over. Uh, recovery was maybe half an hour or something like that. They were basically just monitoring my vitals. Um, like I said, the, the pressure cuff was going every five minutes or so, and they would come over and they would take my temperature. Um, and just making sure that I was okay and then doing the same with the baby. Um, but we were basically just nursing. Um, she was basically latched the entire time. Um, I kind of, I don't know if that was necessary, but I kind of felt like that's what the pediatric nurse was telling us to do, so we did it. And, um, the surgical nurses were chatting about stuff, Disneyland, I remember Disneyland came up. I don't know. Um, so that was fine, you know. Um, then, you know, they wheeled me down across the hall to the uh, recovery, or what's it called, the um, postpartum ward. We hit the button for um, the, there's like a, it's a mural, it's a mural, it's a painting, there's a button and it plays a lullaby in the hospital. So that gets hit on your way from labor and delivery into postpartum. So that's what that means at our hospital. Um, and because I was on a gurney, then um, the baby rode with me. Um, I think normally if you're... I, I'm not sure actually if I had been in a wheelchair, if she would have been on my lap or if she would have been in the bassinet. But anyway, uh, we get into our room and it, I don't think it was much late, longer after that that they let our parents in come say hi. And I feel like the very first sight my daughter got of her grandparents was of them holding phones in her face, <laughs> taking pictures. <laughs> I was like, oh look, it's Lola and Lola iPhone. Um, 
But yeah, they were basically there most of the time during the day, you know, family and friends visiting. And honestly, a lot of people say that like they don't, they didn't like having family visit in the hospital. That it was, they, you know, distracting them from their bonding time or whatever. The fact is, and I don't know if it's because of the C-section, but I didn't really start to bond with her until after we'd come home, at least day three or four, that she really felt like mine. Um, I really just felt like I was babysitting a baby that I didn't know how to deal with, but, you know, I guess I gotta do it, you know, and these are the things that I know I'm supposed to do from the classes, and let's just get through this. Um, and so I didn't feel hormonal or anything when people wanted to hold her. So basically, I found that like, from that standpoint, those first couple days were actually a really perfect time for family to come and meet her and hold her. Um, it sort of let me just recover um, in the bed by myself. Um, whereas a few days later, um, I started to get to that baby blues, you know, hormone dump, irrational kind of mama bear where I just didn't want anybody to hold her, and even though my rational mind could hand her over, my mama bear mind was like, give her back, give her back, uh, you're going to take my daughter, no, no. Um, so the first couple days were better for that. <laughs> anyway, I spent the first day completely paralyzed. Not paralyzed, but like I, it took several hours for the, the spinal to wear off. Um, they would come in and ask me to wiggle my toes and... Um, they came in and they would, you know, change out my puppy pad every every so often and check on me, take a look at my incision, um, and I was cathed until the next morning. Um, and yeah, they finally, it was like, it was, was it the next, yeah, so okay, it was from, the baby was born around noon, and it was until the next morning that I was stuck in bed. Um, and so my husband got really good at changing diapers during that time, and I don't think I had to deal with any straight meconium. I had transitional poop by the time I was dealing with it, but he changed all of the hospital diapers. Um, so that was, that was nice. Um, I got really itchy. Oh man, I got so thirsty because I hadn't had anything to drink since the night before. Um, so it had been 12 hours since my last drink. And my third trimester craving was ice water. Oh my gosh. I was carrying like this thermal cup around with me wherever I went. It was like mostly ice. Um, and so I was so thirsty and they wouldn't give me anything to drink until we got to postpartum. And then yeah, I was drinking a lot of water, which is good. I was on a liquid diet, which is boring. Um, it's like broth, jello, um, but the lemon ices were quite good. I kept ordering those even after I was allowed to eat solids. Um, what else? I got off that liquid diet. It was after I was able to get up. So yeah, the next morning they, they took out the catheter. They, um, put me in the mesh panties. They got me up, you know, sitting and standing. And then I had to start doing laps as often as possible. Um, you know, walking around the halls with the, the bassinet, with the baby, um, who obviously would rather be held than laid down, but she did good. Um, they did all of the different testing and stuff on her, and yeah, like I said, it was, it was good that I wasn't attached yet. <laughs> um, cause I was like, oh yeah, take her down the hall to the nursery to do the, the, you know, blood panel or whatever they were doing, it's, it's fine, we'll be here. Um, you know, it was just like being in a hospital. Um, they would have let us stay for another day, but we wanted to leave on Wednesday. Um, I mean, to be honest, mostly because I just didn't want to pay for another hospital, another day. Um, because the max, I think it's like, you pay per day until you're there for like four or five days and then it's covered with the way our insurance was working, so I just wanted to, I wanted to get home, um, and I just wanted to, you know, not have all the beeping and the incessant, you know, like, yeah, it's hard to sleep <laughs> with a new baby, but it's even harder 
in a hospital with a new baby. But that being said, I was grateful that we were there for two nights. Um, because I've heard that this is actually a thing, that like the second night is harder than the first night. The first night she's, we're all still kind of in a bit of a daze. Um, but the second night she cried for, I want to say an hour and a half, something like that, before some, um, physician's assistant, medical assistant. She was wearing a t-shirt and not scrubs, so I don't know if that means anything. Um, she came in, took pity on us, and took Agnes from Gino and was like, here, I think she really has gas and needs to be burped. So she helped with that. <laughs> the poor thing. It was just, yeah, a lot of, a lot of crying. And at that point, there's nothing in between. It's just crying or not crying. Um, but yeah, if you're, if you're getting ready for your birth, um, like, don't forget to try to sleep. Because... <laughs> It was everything was such a whirl for the first day with people coming and going. Then it was like visiting hours were over, um, and it started to you know it was like then dinner and then it was just me and my husband and the baby, and it gets dark outside and it doesn't even occur to me until it's late like ten, eleven, whatever that like oh yeah it's nighttime we should be sleeping, um, and so that already truncated our sleep time, plus the baby getting up and needing to eat every couple of hours. The nurses would come in and ask us, how long did she nurse on each side, what time, um, when were her diapers, was it poopy or was it pee? Oh, we had to remember all of that. And I didn't have, like, access to my stuff, really. So most of my hospital bag stuff. Um, Check out the post-hospital bag visit, hospital stay bag video up there. Um, that, that'll show you what I actually ended up using and didn't use from my bag. And it was, I did not use very much at all. Um, but if I had to do it over again, I think I would darn what people think and just use cloth pads in the hospital because I just did not enjoy the plasticky papery situation. I never have. That's why I use cloth and it's not nice. But oh my gosh. Yeah, that's... Yeah, I remember um, middle of the night wake-ups. My husband was over on the like sofa bed. The bassinet was next to my bed. But I, I mean if you've ever had a c-section you know that it's like trying to get up when you're pregnant except worse. Um, getting up out of bed to try to get her like that's one thing but then trying to get out of we're trying to get back in with her in my arms so I could nurse her and then when she fell back asleep after that I wanted to like because I they nailed it into me do not fall asleep with the baby on top of you right like because that's not safe and I don't know why I didn't just call a nurse actually and have her that's for the do-over too. Call the nurse and have the nurse put the baby back in the bassinet because I didn't want to wake up my husband or I tried to wake up my husband but I couldn't without making enough racket to wake up other moms, you know. And so I tried my hardest to try to, you know, get her up. And But I found nursing to be really, um, there's an adjective for something that makes you sleepy. Whatever that is, that's what nursing is for me. Um, was for me. It's not anymore. <laughs> but, yeah. Alright, I think that's everything I have to remember. As I say, it, it's like I don't have that visceral memory anymore of precisely how much pain I was in, how difficult it was to fart for the first time, to poop for the first time after I got home how difficult it was to get into bed and to stand up again, how much it hurt when she nursed. Like, all of that I have intellectual memories of, but I think it's a biological imperative that we don't, like, remember it very well after a while. Because, um, you know, if I'm going to do it all over again, we want to have more kids, so. That's the story. Thanks for watching. I hope that that was interesting for you. Um, as uh, yeah, it's not an atypical story, but I, it's less common to not have any contractions whatsoever. And if anything, I want to have another kid just so I can see what that's like. Hoping for a V-back next time, but in case you're asking, we don't 
or no, I don't have any announcements. So anyway, thank you for watching. Subscribe so that you don't miss my next videos, which are going to be on Thursday is uh, plan with me already. And then July, look forward to July. I'm going to be doing stuff. Stay tuned. Okay. All right. See you then. Bye. Thank you.